Hi guys, it's me, Indiana Jones. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. And please leave a comment down below so I get to know you. This is a monthly challenge that is being hosted by Melissa Makes It DIY and her lovely co-host, me, Indiana Jones. This month is called So You Think You Can Craft Glass Jars. Let's check out what I came up with and what everybody else came up with in the playlist below. Let's go. So for my first craft, I'm just going to use one of those glass mason jars and I'm using air dry clay and a mold from IOD mold. As you can see, it really will fit very well if you start molding it before it's dry. And all I'm going to use is hot glue to glue it any embellishment onto my glass. Again, this is Sure Bonder glue and for whatever reason, it seems to work more than regular glues. If not, use some E6000. Okay, so now once the clay embellishments are nice and dry and secure, then I just start giving them a coat of paint and I'm using folk art paint combinations just to get this beautiful dusty kind of pink. It's like an antique pink. Of course, you know, shabby chic. You know, I love it. So just paint the whole bottle, even the top. And make sure you get into all those little ridges of the embellishments. Next, I'm just going to dry brush it with a little bit of a creamy white. It's not stark white, but it's nice creamy white, especially on those embellishments, those clay embellishments. Make sure you get into all the nooks and crannies so you can see the beautiful details. And then just whitewash or I guess dry paint, dry wash, dry paint, dry, dry brush the rest of the bottle. And what would shabby chic be without a little bit of burlap and lace? That's right, just finish it off with some burlap and lace, especially if you're not going to close the top off, which on this one, I'm just going to use it for my makeup brushes or my hair brushes. I think it's perfect for my boudoir. Now, unlike the first one, this is actually a chalk paint that I created myself using a little bit of baking soda to give it a little bit of a rough feel. I really like the use of baking soda and it's kind of like chalk paint and a lot less expensive. A lot less expensive? Yes, a lot less expensive.
Now I'm using one of those cool little uh, yogurt bottles or jars. Oui, it's called oui. And I am actually going to make a candle out of it. Before I put the candle element in, or the wax, the hot wax, I am going to decoupage it with this beautiful um, napkin print that I found at Dollar Tree. I thought it was perfect for spring. And since it'll be translucent, you will be able to see the candlelight through the decoupaged napkin. For the candle, I'm actually using some wicks that I received from BB Craft and that little holder that's going to hold the wick. And I've just melted some of those fragrant, fragrant wax cubes that you can get at the Dollar Tree and they're perfect to make candles. And there you go. Candle ready to go for spring. Now, I know they're not technically jars, but they are glass jars, and these are salt and pepper shakers that you can get at the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna give it a jadeite kind of color. I've always loved those jadeites. And what I'm adding is a little bit of Mod Podge just to give it a little bit of translucency and also add a little more gloss and sheen to the final product. So once I paint this, I'm gonna let it dry, and I'm going to paint it with another coat but not of the paint itself, but of the Mod Podge, just to give it ultra shine. I use that same color combination as I did for the salt and pepper shakers for this glass jar. However, I did not use the Mod Podge sheen and you can tell the difference when it's dry. Look at that. This one is just a more matte color. It doesn't have that high gloss. And I'm just adding a pretty spring ribbon to it. Oh, there it fall off. But uh, yeah, I thought it was cute. And uh, not sure exactly what I'm gonna put in there. Maybe some flowers at my entrance and just adding that bow as an embellishment and you're ready to go for spring. For this next one, I'm using food coloring, water, and some Mod Podge, and I'm actually going to tint this beautiful glass jar that I found at the Dollar Tree. It has these beautiful embellishments outside, on the outside, and I just wanted to tint it lightly pink um, so it would look more vintagey, and it really comes out really nice. So you just roll the water, Mod Podge, and food coloring around in the inside, and then once it's done, you're going to let it drain out make sure you let it all drain out that's what i'm doing here and then i'm going to stick it in an oven for half an hour to 45 minutes at a very low temperature at around 200 degrees 
and make sure you put it over a rack so that it continues to drain out the rest of that paint. And you'll see the final result in just a minute. It's a light tint of that corally red color. I was trying to make it pink, but it came out like a coral color, which I'm absolutely fine with. And there you have it. Light coral color. It's still hot. It's still hot out of the oven. And for my last two jars, I used a matte chalk spray paint outside. And now I'm just going to weather it with a little bit of white paint. Sorry that I'm off screen there. Just pulling it closer to me to make sure I could see what I was doing. And then I'm going to embellish it with some spackle, a little bit of spackle, a little bit of white paint. That was Apple Barrel Paint from Plant Company of Products. Mix them both together. And I'm actually going to use this as the stencil. Yes, I had to use a knife to open my spackle mix the paint and a little bit of water and this is what I'm going to use to stencil this last two jars actually For these two last ones, what I'm going to use is a stencil. This one I tape down because I'm using a round object to make sure it doesn't move around. And just spread a thin, even coat of the spackle. And I'm going to do the same thing with my white jar you'll see in a minute. There's my white jar. And with this one though, I'm going to use blue chalk paint from Folk Art. I'm going to tint that, that spackle and I'm going to use a stencil from the Dollar Tree, which you can stick on straight to the bottle. You have to make absolutely sure that your jar is completely dry so you don't lift the previous paint. But pretty much once you use the stencil, you can't use it again once you use the, um, especially with this, um, I guess, Dollar Tree one. It's not as sturdy as the other plastic stencil, but it just does such a nice job at keeping all of the edges crisp and clean as you will see in just a moment. So again, just spread it on, let it dry a little bit before you pull off the tape or before you pull off the stencil. You don't wanna let it dry completely though, just let it dry a little bit, let it set, and then you can pull off the stencil to show your latest creation. And here we go, here's the white stencil look how beautiful that came out and now wait a second and we'll see the blue one and I think they came out fabulous hi guys so do you think I can craft I really liked making this with the chalk paint or the homemade chalk paint and then just adding some embellishments perfect for my bedroom and I love using spackle as a stencil I hope you have some inspiration from myself Melissa and all the other crafters here I want to thank Melissa of Melissa Makes It DIY she's more than a fellow crafter she's truly a friend please check out her channel and all the other channels that participated today I want to thank you for spending some time with me and ask you if you like this please like share and subscribe most importantly Please stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you, and remember to live the adventure. See you soon, bye! <laughs>